everyone, welcome to the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I am your hostess with the mostest, Mr. Nathaniel Rumpeljantz. As always, I am joined by Mr. Eric Moore. Hello. <laughs> I just almost wanted to steal a line from Kind of Funny there. I was going to call you the seducer, but that's... <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah. I've been okay. watching too many kind of funny podcasts lately. Uh, and then we are also joined by a special guest this week. Uh, maybe we'll get him on next week because next week's kind of a, a special podcast in my heart. Uh, Mr. Darren Har. How's it going, from guys? Zelda Informer. So he's officially my replacement at Zelda Informer. Believe it or not. Well, well. It's official. He he will be called editor in chief. Well, congratulations. As of May first. Oh, it's a big title. I don't he's know if I can handle it. He's basically it. editor in chief already. But yeah, I have been yeah, for like the past couple either. months. But but maybe we'll go into that uh, next week because we have one more podcast recording before my final day, and I know one of the segments I do want to talk about my time at Zelda Informer. So it might be, I'm hopefully I can get you back on for next week too, Darren. Um, as I think you'll have more questions than I than I can really come up with myself to talk about Zelda Informer over the last eight years. Uh. So we have a lot to talk about this week, and first I want to apologize to our viewers because we haven't had a podcast in weeks. <laughs> um, so for those who paid attention to the last podcast we did, we, it was the very first time in probably two, three months that we attempted to have more than just Eric and I on the podcast. Yep. And the problem that we ran into that was that our setup wasn't working. Um, I don't. You can see it in the camera. Like We have headphones on now. We can hear Darren. But that was the idea last time, and then it didn't work. So we had to set a pair of headphones down here. Audio was coming back in through the mics, and then these mics didn't record properly and sounded like we were talking through water or whatever. So the audio we had to use was actually the audio on the camera, which is really crappy, and it frustrated me so bad, I did not want to come back and do the podcast again until we fixed it. And here we are, three weeks later. I think everything's fixed. It better be. <laughs> Fingers I mean, the, crossed. The, I'm, yeah. looking, I'm looking at the audio recorder. Right now. It looks good. Yeah, yeah, it does. So... But I think it looked okay last time, too. So. No, last time it didn't quite peak. Oh, much, yeah, so, you're right. Yep, so anyways, yep. um, this is what, what what happens when you record a podcast and there's no one behind the camera double-checking things and fixing it as we go or yeah. telling us, hey, you need to turn your mic on and off or whatever. Um, <laughs> Have you tried it, turning it off and on again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the IT club. Um, so we have a lot to talk about this week. A ton. And not just because it's been three weeks, but because this has been a lot going on this week. And the first thing I want to get out of the way is probably the thing that <laughs> we've talked about, all three of us already, subtly, without actually saying a whole lot, because we wanted to save our reactions for this particular moment. And that's because, at the as of the day we are recording this podcast, the NES Classic Edition has been discontinued in North America. Rest in peace. Uh Right. So the NES Classic Edition came out in November of last year. Um, most figured it was it was kind of like a temporary holiday run since Nintendo already announced the Switch, and they didn't really have anything but Pokemon going on for the holiday season. So it's kind of like, oh, here's some filler. Go buy this. And it's really awesome. The NES Classic Edition is sweet. I mean, you get 30 of the best NES games of all time for $60. Bucks. Um, they have save states in them, like, like you would have an emulator on your PC. <laughs> you know, Nintendo frowns upon that. But... Here they are. They had save states in there. Um, you the, it, Apparently, from what I've been told and what I've seen in reviews of it, it is some of the very best emulation of NES games people have ever seen. Well, it, it does help that yeah. Nintendo did it. You know, well, uh, yeah. with, with well their Nintendo own, does it on a virtual games. console and it That's, sucks. Yeah. Oh, oh. So, yeah, I guess. Um, so, yeah, so it's really, really excellent quality emulation. Uh, 30 of the best games. You got save states. You had multiple ways to play it. Everything goes through HDMI natively now. So you could have, you could force scan lines on if you want. You can get rid of scan lines. You could play in full widescreen or the original 4.3. Um, it was just really, really cool. It's a thing that wasn't possible with most of these games before a virtual console. Um, the only real complaint most had is that the controller's cord was too short. Um, a reasoning behind it is that the controller also worked with Wiimotes. I, I think people would have just preferred a longer cord because they're not using this thing with Wiimotes. Yeah. Um, but whatever. And now Wiimotes aren't even a thing, so I don't even know why Nintendo did that. But it is what it is. Because <laughs> they had the technology. <laughs> they have the technology. Got to take advantage. Um, but Nintendo, kind of out of nowhere, went to IGN and said, look, we're done with this thing. 
It is... We know that it, it was always meant to be a limited time thing, which Nintendo never actually officially announced it was a limited time thing. To be clear, people assumed it was limited, but Nintendo never advertised it as, oh, it's only out for a limited time. Um, but anyways, that's just to kind of put the kibosh and some people like, oh, it was always intended to be limited. But Nintendo said, you know, it, it was intended to be limited and that they underestimated how popular it was and because of how popular it was, they kept doing more and more runs of it. Um, and they understand that it's still difficult today to get a hold of it. And they apologize for that. And here's this thing that everyone wants. They can't make enough of them. They sell out as fast as they show up on store shelves. And so Nintendo's response is to just stop making it all together. Yeah, let's, uh, let's never <laughs> accuse this is, Nintendo, this is Nintendo of uh, being greedy or cash hungry. Because obviously this is the exact opposite, where you have a product where the law of supply and demand is very clear here. There's not enough supply, and there's way more demand than anyone could have anticipated. And they're just like, well, let's uh, not do this anymore and not make a profit off of this <laughs> ever again. That's, uh, that's basically right. what's happening here, basically. Yeah, it's... It's insane. Um, I was reading a comment by uh, Jason Schreier over at Kotaku, and because he did the report over there of it, and I, you know, whatever they were just reporting the fast, reporting the fast. We get to the final line in it, and I just, it, it, it just, it, it's so sarcastic. It just makes me laugh. Like it, it was something along the lines of, so Nintendo released an extremely popular system that everybody wants, no one can get enough of. So of course Nintendo canceled it, <laughs> and yeah. it's. It's just so interesting how Nintendo came to this decision because one of the logical reasons is they can't make enough NES Classic Editions to keep up with demand. They can't make enough Nintendo Switches to come up with demand. So one of them has to go, right? So get rid of the NES Classic thing so they can make more Nintendo Switches. That's that, That's what some people have literally argued with me today, that this is, this is why they had to cancel it. And the thing is, is we now know the Nintendo Switch has moved 905,000 units in the United States. In March, so it's probably moved over a million by now overall, just in the United States. So they're getting a lot of switches out there. Mm -hmm. I highly doubt that NES Classic Edition has anything to do with the Switch supply line. They've been planning the supply line out for months and months and months. Um, and the fabrication process isn't the same, so it's not like oh we have one line making NES Classics, we have. 10 lines making switches, that one line that we're adding back in is going to make such a big difference to switches. And that's right. assuming they're even made at the same factories in the first place. Um, and I know that, you know, the NES Classic's a little different. Like, Nintendo Switch is completely region-free. So it's like one system, you just make it one time, and it fits the entire world, which is awesome for production lines. Uh, NES Classic is a little different. Like, in Japan, it's not the NES Classic, it's the Famicom Classic. Uh, and it looks different. It's got different games. Europe has different games than the than the United States version does. Um, I think even Australia has some different games than even the Europe people do. And they usually just get the exact same thing as the Europe people do. So it's, it's a situation that I made a video about earlier. And I was raging. I, I, oh. I'm so upset about this. And it's not just because I don't have one, right? I, I never tried to get one. I never even bothered to look up if it was available. I didn't pre-order. It was something I always figured, well, this is really popular. It's going to be around for a long time. I'll just pick it up in a couple years when the demand dies down. Mm -hmm. And they just happen to have a few sitting at, game, at GameStop or Walmart. And then I'll grab one, and then I'll enjoy. And the thing is, I don't I don't feel like I needed one right now because I've already played all these games. Right? Right. Like, these are some of the best games on the NES library. I grew up with it. I played them all. I'm in no rush to play them again, but it is something I would like to have for mm -hmm. when I want to play them. Plus, we at Nintendo Prime, we like doing live streaming. Eventually, I'm going to have to stream more than just Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Although, our fan base keeps demanding What's more Breath of the Wild. Like, when are you going to stream Breath of the Wild again? When are you going to do it again? Um, <laughs> there's, there's so much. <sighs> Breath yeah. of the Wild. Anyways, we'll get to that topic later. So, Darren, how do you feel about this NES Classic situation? Uh, I feel like Nintendo is making a big mistake because I personally know uh, I was talking to my great aunt uh, a couple weeks ago and she wanted to buy the classic edition for her son, which would be my cousin. Um, 
he grew up with you know the, the NES and really wanted one she wanted to get him one for Christmas could not find one and she did not want to pay the scalpers price which let's be honest who does uh, so I you know told her yeah I can't find one either and she's like well if one pops up would you mind letting me know and I'm like I mean yeah I can let you know but uh, probably not gonna probably not gonna work <laughs> they sell out in like two minutes <laughs> I think the last time that I saw one go up I attempted to get one uh, the second it went up I went on the web page and the web page would not load just like all of my previous experiences with different websites that have tried to sell the classic edition they just sell out in seconds or minutes and the website just dissolves yeah, and, and people that want it whether they want it for themselves or if they're just scalpers there's websites that aggregate all these retailers together so like they literally have those pages on like automatic refreshes like every 10 seconds and when it comes in stock i know some i know one person in particular um, they were able to make it so when the status changed from out of stock to in stock, it actually sounds off an alarm. So they could just have it auto refreshing the entire time he's sleeping, and then when it goes off, he just wakes up and it goes by right away. Um, okay, wow. And again, that's like massive scalper mentality, right? But it's also one of those things that, that if you wanted it legit too, that's what you had to do. Um, yeah. And that kind of gets into my point on why I'm angry about this. It's not so much that I don't appreciate that it was a limited run. I think it had to be a limited run because they eventually need to do an SNES Classic, right? They're probably an N64 Classic, maybe even a Game Boy Classic Edition someday. Yeah, but do that so, down the line after a... like everyone has gotten well, yeah. the, the Classic Edition that they well, want. Yeah, and, and well, what I was kind of getting at is it's fine if they were going to limit run this, right? But limit... like. As soon as you knew how popular it was, pick a date in the future. Pick, like, August. We're going to be done making NES Classic as of August. But until then, we have planned to push out 2 or 3 million units between now and then. Um, please look for, uh, for your retailers. And then everyone would know you have X amount of months to grab one and not buy it from a scalper. Um, and plus, you have you can have guarantees that Nintendo is going to start sending out bigger shipments of it because there's an end date, and everyone knows when that end date comes. Even if there's still say 500,000 of them still out on retail shelves, there is no more coming. So by through the next holiday season, they would sell out anyways if there was extra on the shelves. So like my my philosophy with this was Nintendo announced this rather abruptly. They are restocking it through this month. But it's units they've already made. So they already have them in the warehouse. They're just slowly shipping them out to all the various retailers. But it's one of those, instead of announcing the same month that you're going to discontinue it, give us a warning and be like, we are dedicated to making sure everyone who wanted this thing can get their hands on it before we cut off the production line. Instead, they're like, hey, we know this is hard to get. We know it's difficult. We know there's high demand for it still. And we're just not going to give you it. <laughs> Tough squats. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. And what makes this hard to swallow, because I heard someone say, well, this must mean they're going to have Virtual Console coming soon to the Switch. Of course they're going to have Virtual Console and Switch eventually, but Virtual Console, you could never get these 30 games for 60 bucks. You could not get them at this quality emulation. You could not get them with save states. There is absolutely nothing that really correlates between what you got in Virtual Console and this, outside of the fact that Virtual Console, we hope in the future anyways, you'll be able to keep your games forever. Like there are some system, uh, virtual console Universal games with save states. They call them suspend points. Yeah, some. Some. But they're not all 30. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, it, Nate, it was almost like mind... they were experimenting and it led to this. Yeah, would you mind yeah, reading up? that comment that I had sent you? Uh, I, I think... uh, can you read it? My my my, uh, my screen's a little far away from me. Okay, yeah. Let me find it. Um Okay. Here we, have, we have a very interesting comment. Now, this comment comes from some random person over at Gamnesia. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, person who typed this up. I don't. I can't see your name because I copy and pasted this quote. But kudos to you because it made me laugh uh, out loud. So, <laughs> pardon me because this is a little bit NSFW. But you're at the bar with your bros, just having a good time. All of a sudden, 4,827 of the most beautiful women in the world walk in and all crave your one friend's dog. They walk up to him and say, hey man, 
we're all clean, sexy, and into what you're into, and ready to <laughs> ready to plow. <laughs> well, I'm not. You got to get the joke out so everyone else at home can laugh here. And he just sits there <laughs> jerking off. Your friend is Nintendo. <laughs> I couldn't even get through it without laughing, but that's basically you that. Couldn't even get through it. That's basically yeah. it. Here's the here's the just here's the gist of the joke. You're at you're at a bar having a good time, and uh, you're at a bar with your buddy. Sorry, having a good time, and in walks four thousand eight hundred twenty seven of the most beautiful women in the world, and they all come and they all want your dong. <laughs> so they walk up to your friend. I'm like, hey, we're sexy, we're clean, so you don't know STDs, and they you know, they want to have some fun times with you. And instead of having fun times with those women, the friend is sitting there jerking off. <laughs> and the moral of the story is that your friend is Nintendo, <laughs> because all of your the, the correlation here is that everybody wants this thing, and Nintendo is just like, eh. We're done. We don't need it. We, we, we don't need we your don't money. Either. We're done. And, and I mean, to be fair, Nintendo doesn't need our money. They're they're coming off one of the most profitable years they've had in company's history. Um, and it's it feels weird saying that because the Switch wasn't out last year. Pokemon Go technically isn't a Nintendo game, but Nintendo's shares went way up because of it. You know, they do get a slice of the pie. Yes, but it's a smaller slice than people realize. Um, so yeah, it it's very interesting that um, that this is the way Nintendo is choosing to, to handle the NES Classic Edition, and it makes me not want to buy the SNES Classic Edition when it comes out because I feel like I'm going to be taking that away from someone who didn't get to play those games growing up that wants to get into it at a cheaper price. Um, because I got to play all these NES games. I got to play all the SNES games, all the N64 games. All these games are going to throw in these collection packs. I've gotten to play. I don't want to take a cheap way to play that away from people who normally can't afford to do it. Um, and it sucks that knowing that, oh, if I want all these games on the eShop, I'm going to have to go spend five bucks a pop. Like, people don't realize how big of a price difference it is on the eShop compared to what you got in this classic edition. I did the math, and this was this was last year. It would cost almost three hundred dollars to have all thirty of those games on your each on on your Wii U at the time, uh, versus buying the classic edition for sixty. And most of those were very bad emulation, very bad coloration, sometimes laggy controls, um, and most of them did not have save states. So, and the thing is, I don't think that save states are really a be all end all, anyways, because I didn't grow up with save states, so it didn't matter to me. But we're in a world today where people download this stuff illegally for free and have safe states and do whatever they want. Uh, so if Nintendo's going to offer it, they might as well support safe states. But it's it's just upsetting that Nintendo went down this route. Now uh, Eric over here has been silent the whole time. <laughs> and the funny thing is, the very first thing he told he tried to talk to me about when he got here was, dude, did you have an NES Classic? No, well, I did. Um, I saw your post on yeah, it. Yeah, so. because he because he because he saw the post that I made at Nintendo Prime. Um, what are your thoughts on this situation? As someone that I know also wanted this thing. Oh, I most certainly wanted it. And it, you know, to what you were saying, the the whole announced the same month. Well, not even announced the same month. It's halfway through the month. Yeah, you got two weeks. Yeah, right? Congratulations. Two, two weeks Guess to buy what? this thing. Here you go. And by the time you hear this episode, you got like ten days. Yeah, yeah. So if, if I could right now, I would flip this table. That is how angry I am. That, that's absolutely ridiculous. Wow. Please don't. No, I wasn't planning on it. I, that's why I said if I could. <laughs> if you guys are wondering why I don't want him to flip this table, uh, it's not because of the mics. It, you go watch. I, I put up a video that's like a, a, an office tour. You'll quickly see why if he flips his table, I'm in deep doo-doo. There might be no more Nintendo <laughs> Prime. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> oh, anyways, it's... But, yeah, it's, mm. it's so ridiculous that they didn't give... A nice enough warning saying, hey, yes, this was intended to be a limited edition. Sorry we didn't tell you this. So that's why we're telling you three, four months ahead of time, not that's two weeks. <laughs> like, put a timer on it that fans know about. And don't do it. Like, don't make this announcement through a press website that 
not everyone in the world reads. Yes, IGN is the most popular video game website in the world, but not everyone reads that. Why Why did I, did I not get this in my inbox? Mm -hmm. Why wasn't it sent out to all Club Nintendo subscribers or all... You know, all people that have Nintendo accounts. Club Nintendo. Right. Oh, like, I'm sorry. They literally just Nintendo, chose to be like... crappy replacement. Well, fun fun story about my Nintendo. Um, I can't call it a crappy replacement because Club Nintendo felt crappy because it used to give out physical things. Like, awesome physical items for purchasing stuff. But you only got credit for purchasing... Uh, at the time, physical games. Then they eventually advanced it to digital. Um, what I like about what they are doing now beyond that here is that they haven't sat there and overpromised what my Nintendo is. You know what it is. You get some free games. You get some, uh, you know, some digital stuff. And that is what it is. And all of your games now, as of the Switch anyways, physical and digital count towards it. Um, so... Yeah, it's not as good as Club Nintendo used to be, but it never set itself up to be better than Club Nintendo. Still sucks. Whereas Club Nintendo used to Club Nintendo used to be like amazing, and then it was doing what what my Nintendo does now, and now my Nintendo is just like, hey, like we're just owning what this is. This is a discount program, and some free digital items, basically. And the thing is, like it's easy to get it's easy to get mad about it, but Microsoft and Sony don't do this. Yeah. To, to, to have their discount program, you have to subscribe to their online service. There's no club that gathers points and rewards you for just buying games. Well, that's true. So, that's yeah. very yeah. true. So that's, that's the thing. Like Nintendo doesn't have to. No other company does this. So like, I I, I I hate getting mad about it. It's like no, Nintendo's done. They're done. They're done doing all the physical stuff, and that's fine. Because they didn't. They, like we're not in that era anymore. This is a new era of Nintendo where everything's digital, and I'm, I'm okay with it because. I didn't expect them. I, when they re said they were going to replace Club Nintendo, I thought they weren't going to give us anything, to be honest. I thought it was just going to be you get like a 10% off coupon for the eShop for one purchase. <laughs> Woo! Like, so th they've done a little better than that. What's really weird is that they have some games exclusive to my Nintendo, like the Twilight Princess Pick Cross thing. Um, really weird. That I, I didn't think they do exclusive my Nintendo games. I, I think that's weird, but yeah, it is what it is. Anyways. Weird. So we're just going to kind of wrap up the, the, this section of the podcast. Uh, let me throw one more thing out yeah. there, too. Uh, my thought would be, why can't they just let the, the regions themselves decide whether or not they want to continue making this? They might have. Because here's the thing. It's only been discontinued in North America. Oh, yeah, true. So what the hell? So that's why when people are like, oh... Well, it must be to make more Nintendo Switches. Then why are they still making it in Japan? Why are they still making it in Europe? Why are they yeah. still making it in Australia? I never really thought of that. Yeah, you're right. It's what the only hell? North America that has it canceled. Damn you, NA. So it's like, it could be the individuals. It could be NOA being like, yeah, we're tired of supporting it. So it's not worth, we're not making enough money per unit to continue to support it. We were overwhelmed with Switch and fixing the electro icon issue or whatever. Whatever the reason is, it's dumb. Yeah. Because I, so. I mentioned this in my video about it. I said they could raise, they could just say, look, we're going to continue to supply it, but we have to raise the price by 10 bucks, And people might get mad until they start realizing, hey, it's in stock now and I can buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so they could have increased their profit margins I mean, and still e sold out. Even at 40 bucks extra, I mean, 100 bucks, well, it's, still, a, it's still a deal. I mean, I've seen scalpers selling it for 200 a pop. Right. It's still a deal. So it, it's... But... I'm very angry about it. I'm a lot more calm now than I was at the time I made that video, but I'm just as upset about this whole thing. It, mm -hmm. I yeah, literally I was, I was angry when I saw the audience. headline, but then when I read that comment, I mean, it was kind of worth it just just for that piece of gold. <laughs> yeah, just for the <laughs> comment. There is that. Yeah, but you know, and I'm gonna throw this plea out to our audience. If you can give me a logical reason why Nintendo would do this, and I've already gone through with some of the reasons some of our fans have given us, and why they're not logical, why canceling it to make more switches doesn't make sense uh why well it was always planned to be limited so we should just be thankful nintendo still did it for a few months yeah that's what nintendo's acting like which by the way hello arrogance yeah. to, you, you're basically saying yeah we only planned for it to be a month but high demand so we kept it going but hey you know you should thank us we're done with it we know you still can't get one but and don't forget the fact that we aren't going to tell you that it was only supposed like, to be for a like, month I love Nintendo, but this is them at their ultimate peak of just arrogant as hell. 
And they know they can get away with it because, one, it, it was massively successful on a scale that they did not foresee. And they're still riding high right now off of that Switch. That mm-hmm. Switch launch is like the best launch in Nintendo history. And they are just sky high with how they're feeling right now. Their stocks are soaring. Their mobile games are doing well. Um, Nintendo's in a very good place financially. And everything seems to be going their way. And they know it. So they're like, yeah, well, this is some bad news. So we're just going to be arrogant about it. Because... Why not? Everyone's gonna forget about it in a week. Because why yeah. not? <laughs> what I, what I think was is it I'm not gonna forget about is it. Is the fact that they did not expect this console to be this popular? Because I certainly expected it to reach, maybe not the heights when of popularity it, that it is now, but it's close to it. Whereas it seems as they dude, really didn't when they expect announced it that social to reach media blew up this at all. Yeah. When they saw when. Like you watch social media blow up about it when they announced it, and it's like, okay, we were way underestimating. Let's look at the production lines. Yeah, right, exactly. And they didn't do that. No, they're like, ah, well, we'll just see how it goes. We'll sell it for the holiday season and then be done. And that's what they thought internally. As I said, they never actually stated publicly it was only a holiday season item. So like, that's why I know some fans out there that said that even messaged us and said this really sucks it happened because. I actually was going to wait a few years till the price came down on it, which, again, it's already relatively yeah. affordable, but they might have just been price come down as in they don't have to buy from a scalper. Yeah. Because that's the only yeah. way to really get one right now. Yeah, um, I would definitely, if I just so, walked into GameStop and saw one sitting on the shelf, I'd pick it up immediately. But, I mean, I tried to order one online like four different times and I couldn't. So I was just going to wait. And now I guess I won't because... Screen, yeah, the whole the whole know. situation is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, it is probably the first time in a long time I've been legit angry at Nintendo for something they're doing. Because mm-hmm. um, I give Nintendo a lot of free passes on things because I I've been a long time fan. I don't want to say I'm a fanboy. I mean, I run Nintendo Prime. That's all you need to know about how much I love Nintendo. But it, it's one of those things where I'm also able to be openly critical when they're screwing up. Mm-hmm. And like they screwed up a ton with the Wii U. They even screwed up a ton with the 3DS early on. But they turned the 3DS around. They weren't able to turn the Wii U around. And the thing is, I, I like my Wii U. Or I, when I had it, I liked it. But I don't have it now. There's a reason I don't have it now. Mm-hmm. The Switch feels like a better system to me. I don't feel like I need my Wii U. Yeah. I feel like most of the games I like on Switch are probably going to come to... Or liked on Wii U are going to come to Switch anyways. Yep. Um, and in this case, I thought I had time to get the NES Classic because Nintendo never told me I didn't. And now they're telling me I don't have time two weeks before they're done. Mm-hmm. Not good, Nintendo. Not a good look. And the thing is, I just hate that in the way they announce it, just they go into this big, oh, yeah, we're not going to have it anymore. By the way, we know you can't get one. <laughs> but we're not <laughs> making it way? anyways. Yeah. We know you can't get one, and we're not going to sell it anymore. Screw you, people. Yeah. We know you all want one. We know they're difficult to get, and we're done making it. Have a good day. It's like, what? It's just, if they had just gracefully said, look, like, if they had come out and said, look, because we're having issues with the production lines, we're just conceding that we're not going to be able to keep up to meet demand, so we're just going to have to cut our losses, and we're not going to be able to make any more at this time. Maybe we'll bring it back again in the future when we have our production lines in better order. We greatly apologize for the inconvenience. Please look forward to future announcements, um, you know, and then maybe even tease that you plan to do an SNES Classic or something. Like, give something to be excited about where it's like, okay, well, at least they're admitting that they just messed up and they can't keep up. So we're just going to stop it and cut it off now instead of trying to keep up and then come back out with it again, you know, in a year from now you know, or whatever, when they're more capable of doing it. And, and heck, they could even, if they want, throw the switch in as a, hey, look, we're trying to get a handle on our switch situation. We're going to put this on the back burner and we'll come back to it later. And suddenly, like, no, we're done. You can't get it. It's difficult to find. We're sending shipments out for, like, the next couple weeks. Goodbye. And part of me feels really, really, really bad for consumers right now. And I feel and, bad for oh, consumers that were and, planning to get this that haven't played some of those games. No, no, not even just that, but scalpers are having a heyday with this. I can guarantee scalpers it. Scalpers have a heyday with everything. Oh, no. Um, but Just to give you an idea, I, I'm on the desk right now. We, we have some of this Breath of the Wild Amiibo. A bunch of these Amiibo you still can't buy. You still can't get them. They're still sold out everywhere, and scalpers are selling them for like 100 bucks a pop. Uh, I think the the one Amiibo that's, that's ironically not up here that I have that is easy to get to the Bow Couple in one. I don't know why. Oh, it's over there. I forgot to yeah. grab it. Anyways. Um, but yeah, 
I'm just frustrated. I think we're all frustrated because mm-hmm. we all wanted one. We all thought we had time. Um, and I feel bad for the people that were going to get their kids into it. Like, my plan was to get my kids into NES oh, games. Oh, definitely. Simpler to understand. Two buttons and a D-pad. Yeah, they're going to die a lot. They'll get over it. <laughs> my, my kids already play, like, phone games. Like, Aiden dies, like, every five seconds in the game. He's <laughs> yeah. three. I mean, yeah, right, on. right. That's just he, he's used to dying, so it won't even it won't even make him get mad because he's just like that's part of the game. He probably laugh every time he runs Mario into a pit. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, runs into a Goomba. Dad, watch. <laughs> game over. 